Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for our webinar on planning for retirement. Uh, we have a great presentation today that will give you a high-level understanding of what you need to think about when you are thinking about retirement, the planning processes, and how, we, how we're here to help uh, with that whole process because it can be a little uh, overwhelming at times. So um, bear with us, and, and if you do have any questions uh, or concerns, I'm happy to answer any and all questions. Uh, my contact details will be provided at the end of the presentation, and then uh, you can either call me or send me an email, and I'd be happy to schedule a, either a phone call or a meeting and we can uh, take it from there and, and see what we can do to help you with your retirement process planning. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I do want to mention also that this uh, presentation will be recorded. So if any of you have to leave early or if you have some colleagues that wanted to see it, uh, just give me a heads up and we can uh, send that off to you as well once it's finished being processed. So a little bit about Cirrus, as we do have uh, several new people uh, joining us today, uh, hopefully for the first time and not the last. Um, founded back in 1994, headquartered in Toronto, uh, we have two main components to our company. One is office lease negotiations, which when talking about retirement is definitely something that is very important and we will get to. Um, and then the healthcare consulting side, uh, where we provide billing support and operational consulting services for physicians, both on the individual and group level. And again, when, when thinking about retirement, you want to make your practice as, uh, as efficient as possible leading up to the end, uh, especially if you're going to try and sell or, or have someone take over. So it really is a, a good opportunity for us to work together in the months or years leading up to your retirement to help make sure that everything is running as smoothly as possible in, in, in process um, to make sure that the retirement happens uh, effectively and efficiently. So some quick facts just about family physicians in general in Ontario. And, you know, the, the landscape has changed many times over the last few years, and we're always there to, to help you and guide you along the way. And we find most often that you know, not only are physicians better compensated today than they have been in, in many, time, many years past, but there's still more. And, and a lot of physicians do not actually get paid for the care they're delivering. And we find that oftentimes, you know, physicians are billing codes that they don't necessarily have to bill, or they're not billing codes that they should bill, and, and their pay does not align with the care they deliver. And the majority of physicians in Ontario today are in a faux model, which is the most lucrative, uh, knowing that you have you know, that compensation from the capitation payments that is guaranteed on a monthly basis. So for those that, that are in the faux, completely understand that. And for those that aren't, uh, you know, unfortunately with the changes now, we, we can't get you into the faux, but we, we still can help you and, and make sure that you are getting paid appropriately for the care you're delivering. Um, and, and physicians, again, when it comes to retirement, they're just not aware. Um, you know, you start your practice 20, 30, 40, you know, in some cases maybe 50 years ago, and you're not thinking about retirement. And, and now all of a sudden it's creeping up on you. Maybe it's, you know, six months away. Maybe it's a week away. Maybe it's five years away. Whatever the case is, you're just not aware of what needs to be done. And that's where we come in. We're going to help guide you through the process step by step and make sure that you speak to the right people at the right time and, uh, and make sure that that, that uh, transition happens uh, as, as neatly as possible. So the purpose of today's program is to speak about retirement, obviously, and whether or not, like I said, whether it's next week or in five years from now, is never too early to start thinking about it, and it's, it's always a good opportunity to speak to someone, such as Cirrus, to, to help you, you know, really find the way and, and really understand what needs to be done. So some of the first steps you want to think about uh, when you're you know, thinking about retirement is, am I going to quit full-time, you know, so I'm, I'm not going to work anymore, or am I going to cut down to part-time? Choosing a retirement date as well. So, you know, today I'm working three days a week. Next week I want to start down to two days a week, or I want to cut cold turkey. So it really is important to, to pick a date, pick your transition, and, uh, and really decide what you're going to do. And, and that really is the first step. Um, as we go from there, informing your staff is very important. Um, you know, the staff, 
have been with you in, in some cases for, for many, many years, and it really is important for you to keep that relationship with them and, and make sure that you give them as much notice as possible. You know, I, I'm, I can assume that a lot of you care about your staff and, and don't want to just leave them high and dry, so making sure that you, you speak to them. You know, if they have a formal employment contract, what does it say in there? Um, or if they don't have any contract at all, again, giving them as much notice as possible. Uh, severance pay in some cases is, uh, is appropriate. So for, for items like that, it really is important to speak to a lawyer. Um, we do have some lawyers in-house that can guide you in the, in the right direction or get you in touch with the correct uh, employment lawyer uh, to find out exactly what needs to be done. And if a new physician is taking over, speak to your staff about if they want to stay or not. Uh, give them the opportunity to, to meet the incoming staff, the physician, to see if, if there's a good fit there and if they want to stay on and, uh, and stay with, with the new uh, physician. So if you're in a group, um, again, so a family health group, family health organization, things are a little bit different. Um, obviously, you're, you have a little bit more responsibility to other members of the, of the foe and not just yourself anymore. Um, so it, what does it say in your governance agreement? Are you, do you have to give them 30 days notice, 60 days notice, maybe 90 days notice? Uh, what does it say about cost sharing? What responsibilities do you have, not only for yourself, but to the group? Are you guys sharing rent? Are you guys sharing staff? Was there an EMR that was implemented not too long ago and you guys are still paying for that? All these little aspects really do come into play and, and really need to be looked at uh, you know, step by step to make sure that you are doing everything appropriately. Shares of ownership, so again, if you own, a pra own the building, let's say, or own the practice, what happens then? Who, who's taking over your shares? Is the new physician taking over? Or if there's no physician taking over, who does it go to? Does it get split evenly? Can someone buy your shares, all of it, so they have a, a majority? Whatever the case is, we, we need to look at that. And of course, the lease agreement. As I said, you know, we, we deal with leases, hundreds of leases every year, if not thousands. And uh, it really is important to know what your liability is on the lease. What, what's in your name? What is in your corporation's name? What, what are your responsibilities towards the lease from now till, till the end of, uh, till, the, till it expires? Are you able to get out of it? Are you able to transfer? All those little aspects really do come into play. Uh, selling your roster to other group members. Again, do your, pa do your patients want to go to another member within your group? Do your patients want to go to another physician that's taking over? Maybe they just want to leave. Or do your physicians that work with you even want to take your patients? Maybe they're at capacity, they don't have the, uh, the time or the availability to take on more patients. Maybe they're thinking about retirement in the next couple years as well, and they don't want to take on the responsibility of having more patients. So it really is important to, to weigh out all those aspects and, and see what's going on. And as I said, bring an associate, maybe as a locum to begin with, to see if it's a good fit with the patients, with the clinic, with the other physicians, with the staff. All those aspects really do come into play, and you have to take it into consideration. So if you have a solo practice that you're looking to sell, now we're going to obviously help you advertise, letting people know that you're retiring, um, you know, there may be a physician that's a new grad that wants to come in and, and take over your practice. Again, do you want to sell? Do you want to give it to them? That's up to you. That's up to you to decide whether or not you are giving them the goodwill and, and say, look, I, I've been working here for 35 years and I want to give you my practice and, and that's it. I, you know, I care about more about my patients. Great, no problem. Or do you want to sell the practice? You know, we, we do practice valuations, which we will speak about a little bit more, and uh, it really is important to know what your practice is worth, and, and we can help you do that and, and give you that information to provide back to a potential incoming physician to say, look, my practice is worth X number of dollars, and, and this is what I'm asking for it, and this is why I'm asking, and, and this is how I justify it. So again, all, all those aspects we, we do help with. And again, your lease agreement. So are you able to transfer it? Are you, you know, is there any liabilities uh, on the lease that, that will infringe upon you selling it or transferring it or, or, or doing something to, that's going to help you? So let us take a look and, and help you out with your lease as well. Do you have a corporation? Now, if you do have a medical corporation, some people want to keep it open, some people want to close it. 
again, depending on, on your situation, whether or not you're you know, completely retiring and, and not working anymore, whether or not you have something else built into it or, or whatever the case is, consult a lawyer, uh, of course, to, to determine whether or not from a business side um, what needs to be done, whether it needs to be closed, transferred, whatever it is. Uh, is your lease part of that as well? Uh, again, we're, we're going to keep coming back to your lease, but that really is a, a big component of you retiring. So whether your lease is, is tied to you personally, whether it's tied to your med medicine professional corporation, whatever the case is, we, we need to look and see what we need to do. So from the financial standpoint, again, selling your practice, obviously, but um, the financial institutions, letting your banks know. Um, if maybe you have a loan, maybe you have you know, a mortgage, whatever it is, um, or, or just a, a bank account from the ministry that, or from, that gets deposited by the ministry, um, again, letting them know that you're closing it or you know, going to be closing it in six months or you're going to leave it open, you're going to transfer the funds elsewhere, stop payments on any checks that you've, out, that you've written from the corporation or from the uh, business account to different vendors or, or what have you. So, Letting the, the bank know and, and all financial institutions is, is very important. Insurance also. Uh, I mean, you're, you're having, you have mal, malpractice insurance, you have property insurance, you have a whole th bunch of different types of insurance, and you need to know whether or not you need to cancel it or reevaluate it. Again, not overbuy and not underbuy. So we want to make sure that you have the proper insurance. Uh, so again, speak to your insurance broker, maybe speak to your lawyer, whoever's taking uh, care of that, or your accountant. And, uh, and make sure that you determine what you need and what you don't need. Because uh, you know, as you wind down, we obviously want to keep costs in check and, and we don't want to overpay for anything that we don't actually need. Patient notification. Again, so we've been speaking about your perspective and now we need to speak about the patient perspective as well. So the, again, some patients have maybe been with you for 30, 40 years, and uh, they need to know. They need to give, uh, you need to give them some warning. Typically, we like to say six months, um, approximately, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, depending on the situation. But it really is a, a good opportunity to give them as much notification as possible, whether it's by phone call, letter, or poster, um, just speaking to them when they come into the office. It really is giving them the opportunity to seek out a new physician, if that's the case, or give them the opportunity to, to switch to one of your colleagues or to get to know a, a new incoming physician that's taking over your practice. Patient records and EMRs. So again, according to the college, we want to keep them for at least 10 years um, from the date of their last visit. Where do we want to keep those? Again, some, some physicians have the space to keep them at home. If the office is staying open, maybe the, the physicians that are staying there will keep them. Uh, again, depending on the situation, whether or not you're retiring, whether or not somebody's taking over, sorry, whether or not you're, you're you know, completely stopping to work and, and, and nobody's taking over your practice or somebody is taking over your practice, again, it depends on the situation and everyone will be different, but it is important to keep those records um, and give them the, the opportunity to request a copy. Of course, you know, they, they do belong to you, but they do have a you know, the, the opportunity to, uh, to request a copy if that's what they want, if they're going to a new physician. Uh, EMRs, again, if you're on your own and, and you're just closing up shop, cancel any contracts if necessary, speak to them, let them know that you're no longer going to be needing their service, uh, or transfer it over to somebody else. Um, again, we want to maintain patient confidentiality. And again, having those, com every, all the information is on your computers or on a file somewhere. So making sure that we dispose of the information appropriately and, and properly and in a timely manner is obviously uh, the utmost importance. So winding down your practice. So again, retirement is in your mind. Again, are we going to go one of two ways? A new physician is taking over or you're just going to walk away. Regardless of the situation, there are a number of steps that need to be discussed, uh, especially walking away, you have to give notice, Again, to the to the landlord, to your to um, to the group potentially, uh, to the staff, all those obligations that you have uh, based on your on your lease and any financials at the bank. Um, so again, a nice uh, breakdown there of what needs to be considered. And again, if a new physician is coming in, transferring the roster over to them, transferring the lease, 
transferring staff if they if they so choose to to do so. So, again, all these little aspects that probably aren't coming to mind right away uh, really do have a significant impact in in your retirement planning. So. It's better to start early rather than later and, and get everything uh, worked out and, and sorted away as quickly as possible in preparation for retirement so that when the day comes that you decide, you know, I'm closing today, that's it, you don't have anything to worry about. Who requires notification? So there's a whole bunch here uh, of different medical associations and organizations that need notification. Uh, written notification, of course, giving, sending them a letter, letting them know that you're no longer going to be practicing medicine or you're no longer going to be operating this at this location, you're moving locations, you're, you know, maybe you're going to start working in a hospital now or just long-term care or nursing homes or, or whatever the case is, letting them know what your situation is and, and, how, you're, and how the change is, is coming about. Or, again, if you're completely stopping, you're at the point where you don't want to work anymore, letting them know that as well. So some of our services that we'll be able to offer you to, to help with the process and, and make it a little easier to digest and, and, and get through is a roster transfer, roster reconciliation. So it's important to know who your actual patients are. Oftentimes we find the ministry roster versus your EMR roster, there's often discrepancies there uh, whereby you, you believe to have a certain number of patients rostered, but the ministry doesn't have that indicated. So when transferring a roster, it is very important to know who you're actually transferring to. Signing on new physicians, so add-on applications to your FO. Do we have to send those in ahead of time? Absolutely. We need to give uh, the ministry you know, quite a bit of time. As you know, they, they are not the quickest to, to deal with certain items and requests, so we want to give them as much time, and, and that is definitely something that we help with, with the applications um, for the new physicians coming in. Optimize your practice. As I said earlier, we work with physicians leading up to retirement, of course, and, and ongoing throughout their entire career, uh, but especially leading up to the practice, to the to retirement, to make sure that all their bonuses and premiums are being paid and that everything is running as smoothly as possible. Educate your staff, patients, potential incoming physicians. Again, education is a big part of it. We have to let everyone know what's going on. Posters, letters, phone messages, all of these things are, are great ways and, and easy ways to let people know what's happening, when, I, when you're retiring, who's coming to take over, what's happening with the staff. It really is a great opportunity to, uh, to transfer your patients to that new physician coming in. Group planning for tr transitions. Again, if you're in a group setting, you, you need to speak to them. You need to know what's going on. They need to know what's going on. What are the obligations that you have towards the group, uh, not only for yourself, but, but uh, what, what are they going to be left with, uh, rent and, and overhead and, and you know, other expenses and, and the lease and, and who know, everything. So we, we really need to sit down and, and look together to say this is everything that needs to be done and these, these are all the people that are going to be impacted and I'm, you know, doing this ahead of time to make sure that there's a, as little impact as possible, negative impact as possible. And practice valuations. Like I said earlier, we do offer a valuation of your practice, uh, especially in the FO model and, and even in the FIG. Your practice is worth something now. Uh, the fact that the ministry has cut down on the number of physicians being added to groups and limiting it to underserviced areas there, there's value there. Uh, you know, a physician looking to start a practice in the GTA, there's not as many unattached patients as there once was. It, it's very expensive. It's very hard to, to start a new practice. So, you know, if you're earning, you know, for, for argument's sake, let's say $500,000, you are you are generating revenue from, from billings, and you want to sell your practice for one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand. dollars it makes sense because that physician is going to buy it and, and make that back within the first year or two or, or you know, pay it off very soon. And it, it really is a good opportunity for new grads and, and physicians coming from other provinces or, or even other countries to, to buy a practice now and, and get going right away and, and not have to worry about finding patients and, and building up a, a new roster. So a practice valuation is extremely important. We give you a, a breakdown of your income, you know, a breakdown of your, of your practice and, and everything that goes into it with regards to the lease and, and, and uh, actual facility. It's a, it's a great, great tool to use uh, when speaking to prospective buyers to say, look, this is what my practice is worth and this is why it's worth that much. 
So some of the key takeaways for today, transitioning your practice into retirement can be difficult and time consuming, so allow us to help take care of it. Again, we're here every step of the way. We'll get you in touch with the, with the right people, lawyers, accountants, whoever, whoever is necessary at the right time, and we'll help you make sure that those people are contacted and, and you deal with them accordingly to make sure that this transition happens as smoothly as possible. Again, the roster is one of the most important aspects of your practice, especially in the faux model. There's guaranteed income there. We really need to make sure that we know who's rostered and make sure that you know the, those that aren't rostered become rostered if, if appropriate. So when that transition happens, the new physician coming in can take over. Or if, they're, if you're just closing up and, and walking away, then we don't have to worry about that. Set a reasonable value. Again, we're here to help and, and give you that valuation to say, this is what we reasonably think is the value of your practice based on a whole number of aspects. Again, your roster size, your, your rent, your overhead, your other expenses, your, your group, your location, all, all these little aspects really come into play in our, in our valuation to give you the, the proper number to, to give to uh, prospective buyers. And again, walking away can be tough uh, with all the loose ends, so we're going to help that make that process quick and easy. Um, again, better to start early rather than later to, to get things squared away. Uh, don't, leave la don't leave things to the last minute unless, you know, there's unforeseen circumstances and, and a retirement has to happen or you have to leave uh, in a very short period of time. But give yourself time, um, as much time as possible leading up to it. Again, to optimize your practice, make sure that last year or two years or three years you're earning as much as you possibly can, and then you can retire. So that brings us to the end of the presentation for today. So again, thank you so much for joining me today, and uh, I hope you've found it to be helpful. Again, my information is listed there, my email and my phone number. I'd be more than happy to, to answer any questions that you may have. Um, give me a call, send me an email, we can set up a meeting, and uh, we'll take it from there. But again, thank you very much, and uh, I hope everyone has a great day.